In this video, we're gonna quickly discuss the best video settings for the DJI Avada. I just got it, and if you haven't seen my uh, beginner video on this drone, I check it out. My friend Shane took the motion controller and handed it like a pro. So let's get some video settings before the sunset is completely gone and the sky is dark. All right, now we're in the goggles here, and what we're gonna do is go up on the menu. If you have had the goggles two and now you have the goggles three, it's a little tricky. It's getting me a little bit uh, to get used to here. We're gonna start from back to front. We're gonna make our color profile D log M. Being able to color grade your footage always will be the best for video settings. Subscribe to the channel and we will make a video on how to color grade your DJI Avata. Moving on to image stabilization. We are gonna turn off Rocksteady. What we're gonna do is use this program called Gyro Data. For that program to work, we are going to make the camera FOV wide. To record Gyro Data, you need to make sure the camera FOV is wide. Gyro Flow is as simple as dragging your footage into the program, taking it a minute to load up and all of a sudden your footage is corrected and it's super duper stabilized. Unfortunately, the DJI Avada 2 does not have 4K 24. I'm gonna say 4K 60 frames per second is gonna be your best bet for the highest quality. You'll get the most amount of frames to work with to render in slow motion and do things like that. 4K 60 works. If you're in the UK, you might wanna run 4K 50. Aspect ratio, you can do four by three. I'm just gonna keep it 16 by nine. Technically four by three would work, but I don't like how the goggles um, change. I like, I'd rather just fly in full screen. So I'm gonna say 16 by nine, but if you wanna shoot vertical videos, shoot four by three, and you'll be able to make your vid vertical videos a lot easier. When it comes to the white balance, White balance shouldn't be set to auto, it should be set to a number that works. And what I like to do is just find what looks good on the screen. And usually auto will tell me what's good in that moment, but it will change throughout your flight and then it won't look good when you're color grading. So pick something that you like and then you'll have full control over it in your favorite editing studio. So white balance 6300 for this night. I'm not saying 6300 is gonna be your best. It's not, it depends on your uh, whole set of environment and right now 6300 works. EV is gonna be off because we're shooting in full manual video. When you shoot in 60 frames per second, that's what we chose, we're gonna make our shutter speed 1 1 20th. If it's broad daylight and your shutter speed is 1 1 20th, it's gonna be super, super overblown. So you're gonna need to get the DJI filters. They have them on their website and uh, these are what they look like here. These filters will allow you to change your shutter speed and ISO. These ND filters are gonna let you shoot at 1 1 20th shutter speed with 100 ISO in broad daylight. That way you don't have a 1 2,000th of a shutter speed or a variable shutter speed where your footage is gonna look shaky. 1 1 20th is the smoothest motion blur when you shoot in 60 frames per second. If you choose 4K 50 frames, you're gonna shoot 1 100th. If you shoot 4K 30, then you're gonna use 1 60th shutter speed. If you shoot 2.7K, 120 frames per second, you're gonna make sure your shutter speed is 1 240th. That is very important for the smoothest footage possible. It's pretty much the golden standard when it comes to video editing and whatnot. So that's your lesson on shutter speed in this video. And your ISO is gonna be 100. With the DJI Avada's new sensor, I would recommend not going any higher than 800 ISO. You're gonna get really, really grainy footage. Anything higher, it does go, look at this, 25,000 ISO. That is incredibly high for shooting with a small sensor. Even though it's bigger than the original DJI Avada, it's still small. I would not go over 800. So whatever, if you get your shutter speed to 1 1 20th, find the ISO that works best for you. Here is an example, super bright 800, 400's a little bright, 200's not bad, 100 works too. 
I'll have the most to work with here. And we'll never ever want to shoot an auto ISO. Only in certain scenarios, auto ISO is going to look and work okay. And uh, most of the time it's not. Like if you're flying indoors and outdoors, like it could work. But on professional shoots, you're going to want a single shutter speed, a single ISO. And that way your footage isn't going to be all over the place. It's going to be easy to color grade. And that is that. If you come over to Gridlines, if you're shooting anything professional and you want to have a good sense of direction and know where your thirds are, I definitely recommend putting on at least the basic for the Gridlines center point. I definitely recommend you using just because it helps you uh, have a better idea of where you're heading and hopefully you can hit some gaps or whatever you want to do. And that's not really video settings, but that is part of a camera helps for better videos and have a better idea. That's gonna do it for the best video settings for the DJI Avada 2. What are your guys thoughts on this drone so far? If you've got it, I'm excited to hear what you got. I just did my first flight, it's pretty windy. I did crash, the rates were a little bit slower. I tried doing a flip to show off in front of the camera, but um, I did crash. Drone's fine and that is why the DJI Avada 2 is a great beginner drone. If you haven't seen that video, Click right up here, watch Shane fly this drone with ease with the new motion controller. And if you are a little bit concerned about being a beginner, getting the DJI Avada 2, don't worry, you're gonna fly it just fine. And with that being said, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching.